What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender Materials tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about how I'm currently managing my materials and also how I've created a material library that I can quickly access in the future. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the more frustrating things about working in Blender and in 3D modeling programs in general is it's really easy to duplicate work, meaning that you can do a lot of extra work by redoing the same thing over and over again when it comes to setting up your materials. And so this is the current method that I am using to manage materials so that I can access them inside of whatever files I want to. Now I am very open to any feedback down below on how you're managing your materials, but I wanted to talk through something that seems to be working for me so far. Um, it does involve using a couple different add-ons as well, but let's go ahead and just kind of jump in to it and I'll talk to you about what I'm talking about. So a lot of the time what can get a little bit frustrating is if you're working in a let's say you have something like this studio file right here. Let's say we add a UV sphere and then let's say we want to add a material. Well right now in order to add a material what you would need to do is you'd need to go to, into your shading editor, right? You need to create a new material you need to select this and do a control shift T with node wrangler enabled. You need to go into your assets folder or wherever you're storing those and you need to open up whatever you have, right? So let's say you wanted to add like a wood material or something like that. You'd have to find the wood material that you want. And then you'd have to bring in all of your different maps in order to get the look that you're going for. And I mean, this definitely works. So if you're only setting up a couple different materials, this can be pretty easy. However, um, if you've already set this material up a couple different times, it can be kind of frustrating having to do that over and over again. And so what I've started doing is I've started adding my materials to an external Blender file. So instead of coming in and setting this up over and over again, whenever I download a new material, I'm now putting it in a file that I've created. And so this file, basically contains a number of different materials applied to planes. So you can see how, for example, I have this siding material right here, and I've gone ahead and I've set this up inside of my library file. And so because I've set this up inside of my library file, it already exists somewhere, and I just save this file. And so I've done that for basically every material that I have right now. So. Um, and you might want to think about breaking this up into multiple different files if you want to. So instead of putting them all in a single file like I've done, what you can do is you can also put them in separate files. So you could have like a wood materials file and a stone materials file and other things like that. And so what I've done is I've used the add-on stored views in order to save different views so that I can see all of my different materials, right? So I can click across between my different carpet materials, my concrete materials, all the different things like that, my fabrics, all of that stuff, right? So all of these have been set up. And then if I was to select them, go into my shading editor, you can see how I've set them all up with all of their maps and everything else so that I can access them. And then I've also named them in a way that I can find them, right? So I've started off by what type of material it is. So concrete or carpet or whatever. And then I can go through and find them in a list. And so now what I have is I have a list of different materials in here. And these are all saved in my Blender materials file. And so right now what I could do is I could inside of this new file, like let's say for example that I had this siding material on this object and then I wanted to apply another material in here, what I could do is I could go append that material um, from my materials file, right? So I could do a file, append, and then go find my material. So it would be in my Blender materials blend file. I would go under materials and notice how because these are all named, I can find them really easily. So if I want a stone material, I can find my stone material. If I want a tile material, I can find that, right? So what that allows me to do is that allows me to go find a material and then place it on an object. So I can just append that and then it'll show up in my materials list because it's gonna add it to my file, right? So for example, I just picked that, um, rectangular wood look file, well now that shows up in my in model list, right? It's appended it to the list and I can now find it in here. And then I can apply it to this object. 
like this. So that's one way to get those files into your models, right? So you could append those, but that can get a little bit frustrating because there's a lot of like digging into folders and other things like that that you don't necessarily want to do. So what I'm doing instead is I'm using an add-on called Material Library. And so if you go into your preferences and you look for material library and you enable this, um, this is an add-on that allows you to manage your materials over here. And so when you set this up, you wanna make sure that you link, you wanna make sure that any files that you're saving that have materials in them are in this folder and then you've linked to this folder, right? So for me, I have a custom folder in here labeled assets and then materials. And then you can see that my blender materials blend file is in there. I also have some other blend files for other material packs that I've downloaded and other things like that. But what you wanna do is you wanna set your path for wherever those blend files are located um, inside of your preferences so that they're gonna show up. And so what this add-on allows you to do is now when you add a new material, so we're just gonna select our object, go to new, and then we're gonna scroll down what this does is this gives you a little drop down called Material Library VX. And so what Material Library VX is going to do is it's going to check that folder that you specified for blend files. So if I click this drop down right here, you can see how all of the different material files that I had in that folder show up in that list. Well, in this case, if I want to apply something from my Blender Materials file, which is my file that I've created right here with my assets inside of it, all I have to do is just select the Blender Materials file right here. And so you can see how all of the different materials that I have in there show up in this list. So what that means is that means that I now have a list of all the materials that were in that file and I can apply them. So let's say I wanted to apply this brick material, I could just select it and click on Apply to select it, right? So let's say I wanted to add another material to another sphere. I could just find another material that's contained inside of that file. And so by doing this, I, I can use one file or a couple if you decide to break this up if this starts running really slow, but I can use one file in order to manage my materials and then I can bring them in using this material library VX. So then another cool thing about this is I, I downloaded another blend file from BlendSwap. So it's this metal materials pack. And this is just basically a blend file with some materials contained inside of it. Well, all I did was I saved that inside of that folder. So now I can select the metal materials pack, which is a completely separate blender file containing different materials. And I can quickly add materials to this using that as well. So you can see how my metal materials pack file has a number of different materials that I can apply in here. And we could go ahead and we can add a subdivision surface modifier in here, just to make this look a little bit smoother. But you can see how I can quickly use the apply to select it with the different materials in here in order to apply different materials from that blend file. And so there's some other options in here that honestly I haven't been able to get to work very well. So I tried creating a new library and then adding materials to that and it didn't seem to work. It seems to work better if you just create a separate blend file and just set up the materials inside of that and then just link to them from this drop down. But I'm having pretty good luck with using this method so that I don't have to go back and reset up a whole bunch of different materials over and over again inside of Blender. So there's also the option if you decide to use Blender Kit, um, you can use Blender Kit in order to upload materials and then access them from online. I generally don't do things like that just because my internet isn't very good at my house, but that's another way to approach this as well. So like I said, there's not really a right or wrong like accepted way to do this, but this is a way that I'm finding is working well and is really helping me avoid rework in the future. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this method, how you're managing materials. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.